Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this week's edition of the Let's Talk Tuesdays, well, Let's Talk Thursdays podcast, maybe. <laughs> Not exactly sure what we're going to do with the podcast. We're going to keep it on Tuesdays, we're going to move it to Thursdays. I think at the moment we're going to probably move it to Thursdays. I wanted to do it on Wednesday because I think Wednesday would be a better day for me, but uh, at this stage we're going to take, take it to Thursdays, so we'll call it right now, Let's Talk Thursdays podcast. Uh, today... We're talking about the WWE Draft plus WWE Battleground as well. That's the whole theme of the show. Not going to mess around too much today. We're going to get straight into it in a moment's time. Of course, guys, please share the word around about the show by leaving a comment on YouTube, leave a like on the YouTube, or tell a friend and continue to support the show. You can also listen to the show, of course, on Spreaker, Stitcher, iTunes, and iHeartRadio sharing the show around there and leaving reviews, leaving likes, whatever you can do there will certainly help us grow. All of your support is very much so appreciated. So thank you all. Thank you all for continuously helping out to make the show better. Alrighty, so this week, the WWE Draft. Um, Before we get into it, I just want to have a quick announcement as well. Uh, Making a small little change to Universe Mode. I'm going to make a full video about it. But I thought that I'll let you guys know, since you guys are kind of like the the ones that keep up to date. I, I value the Let's Talk Tuesdays listeners as my bigger fans, my, the biggest fans. Because the people who listen to the podcast, they want to listen to what I have to say. And they are actively interested in the things I have to say. So um, what we're going to do with Universe Mode, we had an idea on Twitter. And that is to do ratings for Universe Mode. So what we're going to do in the future is we're going to, you know, have... And compare the ratings, aka the YouTube video views for Raw and SmackDown Universe Mode. And every month we'll kind of have a bit of a review. And the winning brand, whoever gets the most views for the month, um, they'll get something in Universe Mode. Whether it be a draft pick or a number 30 in the Raw Rumble. um, The next NXT superstar who's going to come up. They'll have the rights to all those different things. So I think that's a nice little added element, a little bit more interactivity for you guys as well. I'll explain more about it in the video that I do about it, probably going to go up tomorrow. But um, it's a nice little change. I think it's going to add a little bit more realism to the show as well, and you guys can actually dictate what's going to happen in the future. So more about that um, coming up. Um, as for me, got back going back to college next week. So a bit, a bit of a lazy week as well. Um, so... Um, next week's show will uh, be probably pre-recorded. I'm going to be going to my girlfriend's place on Thursday, which most likely will be when I'm going to put the show up. Um, so next week's show, I'll probably record on Wednesday. So my, maybe um, I'll upload it on Wednesday. I don't know, probably not. But um, some of the things I might talk about could be a little outdated, you know, in terms of news and things when I do upload the show. But I think for the most part, we should be okay. Um, so just letting you guys know as well. And I do apologize to everyone who was expecting a show on thir- on Tuesday. Some of you guys didn't listen to last week's show. That's when I talked about it last week. I said that next week's show was going to definitely be on Thursday. Some of you guys didn't read my tweet. Some of you guys didn't listen to the show. Some of you guys just didn't know. I kept getting messages about it. But yes, next week and probably the week you know, f- going forward for now, it's going to be on Thursdays. And we're going to move it, up, move it to Thursday so we can cover SmackDown, Raw, and even NXT as well. We haven't really talked about... NXT too much in the the podcast history, but um, I am watching NXT every week now. I haven't watched this week's show. I will get to that, but um, I am watching NXT, NXT on a regular basis, so I can start to kind of give my thoughts and opinions on that as well. I don't really have much to say about it, quite honestly. There's not really much to kind of say. If you want me to kind of review what I do and I don't like, um, that's probably the only thing, but I, you know, in terms of NXT, I think it's pretty good. I'm enjoying it, so that's really all I have to say about that. But um, let's get into the draft. That's what we want to talk about today. So the, we'll probably spend majority of the show talking about the draft and a little bit at the end um, to do with Battleground. So that's probably what's on the agenda for today. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a pick by pick discussion of the draft and basically go through every single pick and every single round and kind of give my thoughts and opinions on the overall roster and um, kind of say, you know, see who I think is the best of the, between the two rosters. And I'll say right now from the get-go, I think SmackDown probably won the draft in terms of my opinion. I know a lot of people were kind of concerned like, oh my God, Raw is obviously the powerhouse show. They've already buried SmackDown. In some ways they have, which is why um, I've been a little frustrated with the way they did the draft and what they've done as well in terms of um, keeping Raw three hours, SmackDown two hours, it just doesn't make any sense. So 
We'll talk more about that later on, but first, let's get into the rounds. And the, These were the opening rounds that were actually aired on SmackDown, and a little bit of a problem there as well for me. I would have liked to see more picks on SmackDown. I didn't really get a chance to watch um, afterwards. I didn't get a chance to watch the WWE Network, um, what they did there. I watched a little bit of it. It looked pretty good. I thought they did a good presentation of it, but I would have liked to have seen maybe, you know majority of the picks on SmackDown, and some of the, the guys we don't really give a fuck about um, on you know the network afterwards, but unfortunately, that's not the way it um, it went, but um, you know, if you had the network, it's really no issue, I kind of didn't get a chance to to watch that, I had to, I had to go out after I finished watching SmackDown, so you know, I kind of missed out there, but for the most part, I liked how they did it, I, you know, I, I guess they've done it how they did it in recent years. Um, in the early integration of the brand split, where they kind of announced a few draft picks after a match, then they left and another match began, I felt some of the matches on SmackDown were pretty unnecessary, and I think they could have allocated more time to the brand split, or even have people, um, you know, more time to the draft and have more people kind of give interviews and, and reactions of the draft, but, you know, whatever. Alright, so round number one, the first pick went to Seth, Seth Rollins, who went on to Raw, um... My first round picks were obviously going to be Rollins and Ambrose. I thought they were going to be the first two picked. A lot of people thought it was going to be Cena and Reigns. I actually thought that initially as well, before the suspension kind of went down. But um, it was pretty clear it was going to be Rollins and Ambrose. They kind of built them up as the major, major two stars of the draft the last few weeks. So it made the most sense. Um, Rollins and Raw, Ambrose and SmackDown, no real problem with that for me. I think um, the champion on SmackDown is a good thing. Kind of adds a little bit more um, just excitement to SmackDown. Kind of helps boost it a little bit. Will Ambrose keep the title at Battleground? I don't know. Will they introduce a second world title at the moment? I don't think they will. Uh, from everything I've been reading, it's looking as though they're probably not going to. So I don't know what's going there. Um, we'll talk more about that later, though. Um, Charlotte went as number pick number three, which was odd. Um, why anyone would pick Charlotte as your third pick is beyond me. I thought that was like, oh my god, Raw has fucked up. <laughs> that was my initial reaction. Raw has fucked up. Um, SmackDown got Styles at four. So, Styles and Ambrose, I would love to see a feud between those two. It looks as though we might get that. That's exciting. Then, Finn Balor, the first man from NXT... Um, drafted, so he went to Raw, and him going as Raw's third pick, and as the fifth overall pick, that's a big, big statement to make, that obviously suggests that Finn Balor's going to get a huge push, he's going to be a main event level star, which is what he should be, he should be a top tier name, I would love to see Finn Balor as champion, honestly, you know, bring him in, have him huge kind of build, and you know, give him a big push, and lead him towards winning the championship. I think Finn Balor could be a megastar. The only thing that really will hold him back, and, you know, some people go, ah, Brendan, I can't believe you say that, but look, him being Irish may be the only concern because he's got the accent, Vince McMahon. Um, I know, I think Vince McMahon's part Irish anyways, but I don't think it's going to really matter. Some people can't really, the American audience kind of struggle a little bit with the the accents, and I'm going to admit, I kind of struggle too sometimes, but I think Finn Balor, you know, speaks okay. The promos and the accent may be the only thing that's going to hold Finn Balor back, but everything else, in the ring, the character, man, this guy could be something. The thing is, Finn Balor, he appeals to all audiences. He's got the demon, he's got the makeup and the face paint and everything like that, that appeals to the children, this this superhero type character. That's cool. And then it's also cool to the older audience as well who like that and and you know can appreciate how good of a wrestler he is and and you know everything like that. So Finn Balor kind of appeals to both. Is he going to be a babyface or a heel? That's another question. I mean, he is a babyface at the moment. I feel like Finn Balor as a heel will be more effective. And I know some people kind of think, well, maybe he'll reunite with the club. I don't think that's going to happen either. I think they're going to keep Finn Balor solo. And honestly, I probably would as well. I think I would keep Finn Balor by himself and just, you know, let him go. Let's just see what he can do. But um, it's a big, it's a bit of a surprise that he went up that early. I probably would have thought he might go number 10, you know, pick 10 or something like that. But pick 5 is pretty impressive. So that's obviously suggests to me um, they got some high hopes for him. 
All right, so round number two, uh, Raw. Raw getting three picks and then SmackDown getting two picks every round was just shitty. I, I didn't like that. You know, Raw's got to be two hours. I, I mean, I've kind of talked about it enough, but it's got to be two hours. We're going to have a brand split. You've got to have two brands with the equal amount of time. I mean, and the equal amount of Ross superstars in each roster. I mean, Raw's got like 20, 20 more guys than SmackDown. How the fuck is that fair? How does that make things fair? I don't know. Roman Reigns went to Raw, so it looks as though Reigns and Rollins may continue their feud onto Raw. Um, maybe Finn Balor versus Reigns could happen. Who knows? But that's cool. They've split Cena up as well from Roman. They put Cena on SmackDown, which is a good decision. Cena on SmackDown will kind of give it a bit of star power that it needs. And a bit of faith and trust in the audience as well, because... A lot of people kind of go, well, SmackDown's always going to be the B show. You know, all the major stars are always going to be on Raw. So having Cena on SmackDown will help kind of elude some of those um, thoughts and opinions there. And that's a good strategy to do it. Um, Lesnar went to Raw. Um, honestly, I would have liked to maybe seen Lesnar as a free agent. I mean, a guy who can go on either show, he can do whatever the fuck he wants. But, you know, him on Raw, um, I guess makes the most sense because they're still billing Raw as a flagship show, so whatever. Randy Orton on the SmackDown. Again, another bit of a boost to the star power there. Um, Randy Orton versus AJ Styles could happen, which would be exciting. I'd like to see that. Um, it also will mean that Orton and Lesnar is kind of split in SummerSlam, so I'm not sure what's going to happen there. They're going to appear on both shows for their feud or be separated completely until... SummerSlam, that'd be interesting to see how they build that. And then finally in round two, the New Day, uh, the champions, tag champs, went to Raw. So, no splitting up the New Day there. Um, you know, kind of getting rid of some of the rumors there that they might even split them up, which I think would be retarded. All right, round three, Sami Zayn to Raw. Um, fair enough. Bray White to SmackDown, I like that. I don't like the fact that the Whites were drafted separately. I think that is a big mistake. They split up the White family, as we'll talk about later on. I think that's a huge mistake. Just when the White family was starting to get going again, there's a group, the New Day thing, you know, fighting in the compound was cool. Now, as soon as the Whites are starting to get some momentum, they've taken it all away from them. The only thing that could perhaps change things is that if they bring back Luke Harper reunite him with Eric Rowan and then Bray Wyatt as well and kind of reform that old trio and kind of have Braun Strowman go on his own. If that's the plan, then maybe, okay. But we don't know when Luke Harper's coming back. I think he did his ACL earlier this year, so he's probably still got plenty of months to go. So I don't know what's going to happen there. Um, Sasha Banks on Raw, Becky Lynch on SmackDown, Jericho on Raw as well. So um, not much to really say there. Not sure what they're going to do with the women's division. And obviously, they're going to have the title on both shows. So the champion is going to appear on both shows. This is the thing. I don't like the whole champion on both shows thing. I really don't. I think you got to have a champion on the one show. I mean, for the women, I, I can get it if the women are just on whatever. But I don't know. I just, I just don't see how they're going to make that work well. Um, the tag team champs on both shows... You know, the only thing that I could perhaps see them doing or, or I would suggest doing is perhaps crown, for example, two number one contenders from both brands and then have those two number one contenders compete against one another. And honestly, I would use a show like Main Event is where you see cross-branded matches. And you could have a match like that and put on Main Event. I mean, why not? Let's fucking use that show as something other than a piece of shit. So... It'll be interesting to see what they do with Superstars main event as well. Will they have, you know, similar to what they did back in the day with Velocity and Sunday Night Heat, will they have main event as SmackDown's thing and uh, Superstars as Raw's thing? Will they do that? I think that would kind of um, work, and I guess you can kind of have a few guys that don't get to appear on those shows. But let's be honest, with Raw three hours, I think every fucking person is going to be on Raw. I think no one's going to have a night off <laughs> because they're going to have to feel... All this time, they already have enough filler as it is with the entire roster. Now you have to fill all this time when you have only half the roster, or well, three, you know, three, th uh, two thirds of the roster, I should say. So, eh, I don't know. I don't know. They're gonna have to sign some new people. We'll talk more about that later, as well. 
Um, anyways, continue on. Rusev, he's going to Raw. Miz going to SmackDown. I like that. I like the US on, on Raw. I like the, the IC on SmackDown. Kevin Owens on Raw. I would have thought they would have split Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. I guess, you know, we're going to see the feud continue. I'm a little... You know, once we see this Battleground match, I'm kind of done with the Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens feud. I think we're going to be... We've seen enough, probably, from there. I think the feud should be done. So... You get the feeling that whenever, as long as Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are in the same show, they can never, they're always going to be at each other. So I would have split them up, have Kevin go to SmackDown and Sami Zayn on Raw or vice versa. It doesn't really matter. But I think Kevin Owens, he went number 18 in the draft. Does it really suggest to me that they kind of see him as a major star? Um, picking, you know, a number of women before him is a little concerning. I think Kevin Owens should be a top-tier heel, and him being on Raw may suggest that he could get an opportunity, but you know, going that late in the draft, pick number 18 is a little concerning. Baron Corbin to SmackDown. Um, I could see Baron Corbin winning the IC title sometime this year. I think that could happen. And so cast the Raw as well. Seems as though a lot of tag teams, a lot of the big tag teams are going to Raw. Um, and that is followed up by Gallows and Anderson to Raw. So they've split up the club. I don't like this. I think the club on its own, Gallows and Anderson on their own, just wasn't clicking, just wasn't getting over with the fans. And the trio was starting to work well. They even had the stupid catchphrase, beat up John Cena going, you know, they were starting to get some momentum, starting to get, get over a little bit. Now they split them up. I get it. You know, I get why they did it. Look, Cena and AJ Styles have both lost their groups. They both lost the tag teams that are, you know, helping them out. Now it's going to be just Cena and AJ Styles by themselves on SmackDown. So for SummerSlam, no one can help them out. It's just them two left. Let's settle it right there. Cena will beat Styles, by the way, and they'll move on. So I can get why they did it, but long term, was it the smartest idea? Not really, no. Um, Gallows, yeah, like we said, Gallows and Anderson to Raw. American Alpha to SmackDown. So another NXT team, the first NXT team moving up. Some more NXT superstars. Good to see. American Alpha, I think, has been ready for a while now. They are tremendously popular in NXT. They're my favorite tag team at the moment. I would love to see them get a big push on SmackDown. They're great. They really are great. They can really offer a lot there. And it's plain to light. The Big Show. Number 23, Big Show, up to Raw. That's exciting. Dolph Ziggler, he's about as, as you know, he's not much more exciting. Um, number 24 to SmackDown. Nia Jax goes to Raw, so another NXT pick as well. So there you go. And the final round for SmackDown, actually, before the, the WWE Network. Uh, Neville announcing his return. He's coming back to Raw, which is good. With the Cruiserweight division, I think Neville could be the guy to kind of be the champion there and kind of spearhead that. Natalia to SmackDown, which means more Becky Lynch and Natalia. Oh, my God. That is not something I'm looking forward to. They are... You know, when they're not talking, it's okay. But more Natalia promos. Oh, my God. Cesaro to Raw, number 28. And, um... Well, a bit of controversy there. Did the shoot promo. Um, I guess we'll talk about that now. I know there's some people asking me that in the fan questions later on, but um, a bit of controversy there. Apparently, he did a bit of a shoot promo backstage, kind of saying that I should be higher up and, you know, that I actually can talk. Look at me, I'm talking and blah, 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 blah. You know, good on Cesaro. About time, you know, he steps up and, you know, says something. Will it hurt him? I don't think so. I think he'll be okay. I think, you know, it won't really affect him, hopefully. I mean, it'd be... It pissed me off if they buried him. Look at it. You know, you got Raw, you got SmackDown. You got two thirds on Raw and a third on SmackDown. Surely there's some room now. Surely there's some opportunity for Cesaro to become a main event guy. I mean, come on. I mean, if there's anyone, anyone they're going to push to that top spot, Cesaro's got to be it. I get it. Not the best promo, but he still can cut one. That's okay. In the ring, he's exciting, he's just phenomenal. The things he can do is incredible. He's great. Why he just continues to lose, why he continues to be undervalued is beyond me. I don't know. 
Pick number 25, 29, I should say. Alberto Del Rio to SmackDown. Sheamus to Raw. Thank God they're both not on the same show. Oh, I'm glad they split those two up. But it means that I'm going to have to suffer one of them every week. Every show. That sucks. But, you know, it's better than a double dose. A double dose in one night would be even worse, I think. I spread it out a little bit. Just one small little hit of it on Raw. Another small little hit of it on SmackDown. That's okay. I can deal with that. But a double dose on Raw, for example. Yeah, that's that's a worry. That's a problem. But nonetheless, that's all we have to worry about there. So that were all, that was all the picks that was on, on uh, SmackDown. So 30 picks on SmackDown. I just felt they could have had another 15, 20 more. Would have been a little better. Um, so, during Draft Center, number 31, Golden Truth to Raw, the Usos to SmackDown, so the Usos separated from Roman Reigns as well, thank God. Um, SmackDown's starting to get some tag teams going here. Titus O'Neil to Raw, Demon Kane to SmackDown, and Paige to Raw. Um, potentially, we could see more Titus O'Neil and Rusev matches. Darren Young's going to Raw, so that's pretty much a given. He's not winning the belt. At uh, Battleground, Kalisto, unless they do the switcheroo, switch it, you know, I could see potentially this maybe even happening. Zack Ryder wins, and Darren Young wins, and they flip the titles, they switch the titles. God, I mean, who the fuck wants to see Zack Ryder and Darren Young as champion? I mean, oh, come on. That would not be good. Kalisto, 37, he's going to smack down. This is an interesting one. I think Kalisto should have been on Raw you got a cruiserweight division. Kalisto, quintessential cruiserweight. You know, why not? Why is he on Why is he on SmackDown? He's missing out there. Would have had a bit more of a chance to, to shine. Um, Sin Cara's going to Raw. So they split the Lucha Dragons up. Probably for the best. Naomi. Didn't even know she was still employed. Um, she's on SmackDown. Z- uh, Jack Swagger, he's on Raw. The Ascension on SmackDown. The Dudley's on Raw. Zack Ryder on SmackDown. Samurai Raw. Paula Cruz. Isn't it sad? Paula Cruz, pick number 45. And that says that there's 45 people that WWE sees more valuable than Apollo Cruz. Now that sucks. Apollo Cruz, I've said it for weeks. You know, I was wondering where the hell he is. Why is he not on TV more? Why is he not winning? Why is he not getting a push? And they've just folded it up with another kick to the stomach. Number 45, at least he's on SmackDown. I'm happy about that. I'm happy he's on SmackDown. But it just goes to show they're not really that high on him um, getting drafted that late. Mark Henry to Raw. Um, We saw Mark Henry in a tag match, but before that, we don't really see much of Mark Henry anymore. And I think the big show's on Raw as well. So two of the old guys on Raw, Kane's on SmackDown. So eh, it's not too bad. They probably need someone like Mark Henry more on Raw, honestly, with you, to be honest with you, because, you know, look, you know, he's up there in age, you can start putting over a few more guys, more opportunities for him to do that on on uh, on Raw. Um, continuing on, Alexa Bliss is coming up from NXT, and she's going to go to SmackDown. So, we've got, I think, three new women coming up from NXT to... SmackDown or Raw, so it's going to breathe a little bit more new life into the division. Alexa Bliss, haven't seen much of her, quite honestly, with you, so I'm not going to comment too much. Um, so I think, you know, more women, the better. They need to start phasing out some of the people. They've lost the Bella Twins, they're pretty much done. Nikki Bella may come back, who knows. Tamina Snooker, I think she's going to get fired pretty soon. Naomi, they've kind of cycled her out a little bit. So, who knows? Bringing, bringing in some new people. Nia Jax, she could be the new monster. You know, Alexa Bliss can be the cute blonde. You know, Natalia's probably on her way out too, I hope. So, they need to start bringing in a, new, a few new people. So, this is a good thing. Um, Braun Strowman, he's going to Raw. So, they split Strowman up from Rowan and Bray. Strowman going to Raw. So... Are we going to have Strowman as, like, the new Kane or something? Like, the new big jacked-up monster who just destroys everyone? Is that what we're going to do? I think Strowman just doesn't have it in the ring yet. I mean, 
you know, Kane in his prime, Undertaker in his prime, they could kick ass in the ring. Big Show even as well. So, Strowman, I mean, I saw him post, I don't know if I mentioned this last week, but I saw him put a picture on Instagram last week or something. And he said, oh, you guys think I'm fat. And he showed a picture, and this guy is just fucking huge. He is like 400 pounds or something, 380 pounds, and he's just absolutely ripped. And Oh, my God. He's a monster, to say the least. He's got the size. He's got the, you know, the look. He has that down pack, but just in the ring, still needs to improve before you can start to give him a, a top-tier push. So, number 48 doesn't really say much about him. I think maybe six months ago, he'd probably be in like the top 25. But number 48 is not really that great of a sign. Brizango going to SmackDown. Bo Dallas going to Raw. Even Marie, she's going to get a spot on the on the, the two brands. She's going to SmackDown. So what's going on with her? I mean... She came back for WrestleMania, did a WrestleMania match. Haven't seen any any of her since, I don't believe. Don't even think she's been on NXT, if mu- if so, not much. So what are they going to do with her? Is she going to be in the ring? Is she going to wrestle? What's she going to do? Honestly, her as a valet would work pretty well. Um, you know, even even like Brizengo, I'm thinking like could use someone like her. I don't know, like. I know those guys are two pretty boys. Have Eve Marie, who's the hot girl. That could work. I, I don't know. It's Eve Marie needs to be a valet, not a manager. We don't want her talking. Just a hot woman who walks to the ring with a heel wrestler. She looks hot. She looks good. And she just stands there and does fucking nothing. Because that is all she can do good. And if she can't do that good, then you need to get rid of her. In the ring, no one wants to see her. She just hasn't got the time or the skill. She's in her 30s now. If she hasn't got it down packed yet, is she going to get it at all? I don't think so. So honestly, to utilize her, I would have her as a valet. The Shining Stars, who gives a shit? And they're going to Raw, though. The Vaude Villains, the SmackDown, number 53. They are your new jobbers, ladies and gentlemen. I have been tracking... The Ford Villains results, and they have not won a match in the last five weeks. Now, does that concern you? Is that a push to you, ladies and gentlemen? Enzo and Cass. It was either Enzo and Cass or the Ford Villains. Only one team could get that push, and they brought them both at the same time. Only one of them could do it, and it was going to be Enzo and Cass, now Ford Villains, the number 53 in the draft. And are not even getting a win. They're not even winning. You know, They're losing the golden truth every week. They're losing to everyone. So, who cares? They are, I'm sorry to say, but you're looking at the uh, probably the new Ascension. You know, Are the Ascension on SmackDown or Raw? I don't know. I don't care. But wherever the Ascension is, you know, the Vaude Villains will help help them out. Help the, help everyone out. They'll beat the guys. They'll put everyone over. They'll lose to everyone. They're doing the deed for, for everyone. Um, continue this on. Alicia Fox to Raw. Rowan to SmackDown. So I'm guessing Rowan might still be with Bray. I don't think Rowan on his own will work well, so they'll probably have to keep him there. Dana Brooke, number 56. I'm surprised she's that late in the draft. But she's going to Raw, which means she's going to be there with Charlotte still. I thought they would split that up. I was hoping they would split that up, but obviously not. And a couple more picks from NXT. Mojo Rawley. 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 Coming up. Um, well, I think Zach's on SmackDown. So they could reunite the Hype Bros. And if they're going to do that, I'm all for that. Hype Bros, sure. On his own, eh, good luck to him because he's going to need it. Curtis Axel to Raw, Carmella coming to SmackDown. Look, I'm disappointed that they didn't bring her up and have her with Enzo and Cass. I get it. Enzo and Cass probably doesn't need need her at the stage. Carmella could do good on her own. But I just feel like, you know, have her with Enzo and Cass for a while, and that would just transform that group into something even bigger than what it is. Enzo and Cass are doing great. You add in Carmella, people will love them even more. Um, Carmella is, is great. She's a lot of fun. So I think she's going to be a good addition to the women's division. I expect her, of all of the new women, to perhaps get that 
extra opportunity. I think she'll probably the better looking out of all three. I think she might get a bit bit more of an opportunity. Um, we'll include even Marie as well. So the better out of all four of them. So I think she might even get a chance at that title down the line, which I think will be cool. And undrafted was Heat, was Heat Slater. I don't know why they undrafted him. Are they going to do a storyline? What's the deal there? I don't know. So uh, I know they did a little video about it on on uh, the network or on YouTube or whatever. And I know he got injured, so I don't know. I don't know what they're doing there. My guess is they'll do some kind of storyline. So we went... All right, so we've done, half, <laughs> we've done quite a lot of time there, pick by pick. But um, overall thoughts... I don't think the brands, uh, you know, I don't think one brand has the advantage too much. I think SmackDown has a solid, solid roster. Raw obviously needs more, so I think they've done a pretty good job. What show am I going to be watching? I'm going to be watching SmackDown. SmackDown's two hours. I'm going to watch both, obviously, but the show that I'm going to look forward to the most, SmackDown. Two hours, plenty of star power there. Um, some young bucks like the American Alpha, Polo Cruz to look forward to. And I think it's just not going to be as long. It's not going to be as drawn out as Raw. Raw's going to struggle. Like, really is. You know, got so much time to fill with so few guys. Good luck. They're going to need it. So, for me, SmackDown's going to be the show. Um, SmackDown Live, um, not good signs. There's no new set, no new change. So, this new version of SmackDown is exactly the same damn thing. So, that's not a good thing. In my opinion, they should have changed the set. They should change things up. Maybe they might do that next week. That's hopeful thinking, wishful thinking. But they need to change things up. They really do. So, can SmackDown compete with Raw? Two hours versus three hours. Is this too much of a difference? And I've got to say, really, right now, I think SmackDown has a a good roster, like I said. But how can a brand that has two hours beat a brand that has three hours. I mean, three hours is just a huge advantage. Just let's be, let's use a bit of logic here. You know, why does Raw get three hours and SmackDown get two hours? You know, I don't get it. So I just feel like they got to change it back to two. And I, I hope the ratings of SmackDown is better than Raw. This might be the only thing that can help Raw. If the SmackDown ratings are strong, if the SmackDown ratings are better, I know they did I know their ratings was better than uh, Raw this week, but I guess that would be a one-off thing. But if SmackDown can actually do better ratings than Raw, that might be what the only thing that they that might be the only thing that they do to kind of force a change. That might be the only thing, you know. So if you want a bit of a change, I guess the only thing would be you know is to tune into SmackDown a little bit more. But will they even care? I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Um. No new signings, so a lot of rumors were going around that they're going to bring in Jimmy Wang Yang and, you know, what's his name? What, what is that? Brett, Brett May? What's his Kurt Hawkins, that's the guy. Bring in guys like them, bring them back, and, you know, whatever. But none of them showed up in the draft, so what's going to happen there? Is, are they going to bring any of them back? Are they going to bring them back over the next few months, kind of sign and sign and sign? To kind of keep the general manager thing going. Because, you know, what what the general managers really have to do after the draft? Not that much. Just do the matches. So, more backstage segments with, you know, people coming in to sign contracts and things like that. Could add a bit bit more interest and kind of help the GMs out a little bit more as well. So, I hope they bring some more people in because they're going to have to. But I hope they don't bring in people who don't need to be here. Kurt Hawkins, for example. I mean, Jimmy Wang Yang, you know, a couple of guys like that. We don't need them, you know. It makes you wonder why they got rid of Cody, why they got rid of Sandow. I know Cody Rhodes walked out his own, but geez, that would be handy right now, wouldn't they? Um, you know, look, what have we got on the market? We got John Morrison, we got MVP, Sheldon Benjamin, you know, Jay Lethal. Can we bring some of these guys in? Help boost up the roster. Look at NXT a little bit more. Some notable admissions um, from oh, omissions, I think it is. Uh, was Nakamura. I was hoping he was going to come up. Bailey, Still a little hope that Bailey could be the surprise partner at Battleground, so I won't judge yet. I think there's a chance, but, you know, what brand will she end up on? Who who knows? Um, Bobby Roode. I would have perhaps even liked Bobby Roode just to skip NXT and just come straight to the main roster. Um, Austin Aries. 
I mean, these are guys, Samoa Joe, these are guys who already, these guys are late 30s, come on, let's bring them in, let's bring them up, let's get them going. Obviously, it would deplete NXT big time, but look, NXT is a developmental show, it's, I get it, it's a draw for the network, but you got to get the ratings for SmackDown and Raw, you got to fix your main shows, you got two big shows now, not just one, one and then a couple shitty shows, they've got two shows they've got to make good. And if they're going to make it good, they need some wrestlers who can make it good. And they need to go to NXT and say, you, 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 and you, you're coming with me. See you on SmackDown on Tuesday. They've got to do that. Otherwise, how are they going to fill all this time and keep the viewers? I don't know. I mean, there's some good people in NXT still. I think Ty Dillinger missed out. I think he probably should have moved up. He's a bit like a Tyler Breeze, kind of never wins much, always putting over guys. Has some potential though, has some talent, you know, has a decent gimmick, could come up and, you know, have a small little mid-card run there. But I guess if they brought him up, I could see him obviously having the same fate as a Tyler Breeze, which not which wouldn't be good for him, obviously. Um Who else can we bring up from NXT? I mean Asuka, we could bring her up as well. You know, Asuka, I didn't even know this until recent, is actually thirty-four years old, so you'd have to say might not have much time to actually go to the main roster unless she goes kind of now. You know, if she goes now, she might get two, three years in. But realistically, WWE doesn't really keep that many women around in their late 30s, so she might not have much of an opportunity at all. So you'd have to say you probably want to bring her up sooner rather than later. But yeah, I mean, look, it is what it is. I think they did a pretty decent job. They presented the draft pretty good. Um, The two GMs... Mick Foley, Daniel Bryan, the announcement on Raw. Um, Daniel Bryan, I expected. I thought Triple H was going to be the one for Raw. I just don't know how I feel because Stephanie's a heel, Mick Foley's a babyface. The Their interactions there just haven't been that good. Um, Mick Foley himself, I like. I like Mick Foley, always been a fan of Mick Foley. But just his interactions with Stephanie, I'm not sure about. I get it, Triple H, as the authority figure, has been played out. We've seen it forever and forever. But I think it would just make a little bit more sense there. Or bring back someone else as a heel. I don't know. Will Foley turn heel? Will he heal it up? It's possible. I'm not going to rule it out. I could see it happening. But just so far, the chemistry between Foley and Stephanie has been a little awkward. It's not really going well yet. Hopefully they can kind of get things going a little bit better in the future weeks. Maybe that's the whole point of it. Maybe they're... You know, there's got to be some dissension there. Maybe Mick Foley will rebel against Stephanie and we'll have a bit of a storyline there. I don't know. But at the moment, uh, you know, I'd probably give that about a C plus at the moment. But Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon, that's about an A. They're, they're good. They seem like two friends who are working together and they're on the same page and it looks good, works good. They were great. Foley and Stephanie, not so good. Brian and Shane, very good. Really like that. And Daniel Bryan, huge reactions. Gets the crowd going, which is a good thing. You know, gets the crowd going without overshadowing too much. I think it could be a factor down the line. But I think people respect that he's retired now. They still want to do the yes chance, still want to support him. But they're not going to hijack the show anymore. They're not going to, you know, go over the top with it, which is a good thing. So, and maybe when they like something on SmackDown now, they'll give it a big yes chat. And maybe, you know, if they want to compare the two brands, maybe they'll do a yes chant to support SmackDown from now. Who knows? A few different things there. But um, I like Brian and I like Shane in those roles. And another thing as well, they actually changed the announcers for Raw and SmackDown. This is a very good change. This is a change they really, really needed. So Raw has Michael Cole, Corey Graves, and Byron Saxon. Obviously, Byron Saxon, he should go because he's the drizzling shit. He is officially officially on the shit list. He is a honorary member. He might be the team captain on the shit list at the moment. He he sucks. He's horrible. Corey Graves, though, he might help make things less shit. So Michael Cole and Corey Graves, I could see them working together okay. JBL needed a change. JBL needed a bit of a fresh start. And him with Mauro and Allo, I could see working well. I think JBL probably... Um, respects more Ronaldo, you know, or like a bit of a word. But in character, storyline-wise, I can't see JBL picking on more Ronaldo that much. I can't see him kind of bickering with him. I just see them calling the damn match, giving their analysis, 
which is a good thing, and I think that might help out. JBL and David Atunga, on the other hand, though, I could see JBL poking fun at David Atunga. So is David Atunga going to be the new Byron Saxon, SmackDown's version of him? I hope not. David Atunga is not that bad. A lot of people will kind of go, oh my god, what the fuck, David Atunga? But they obviously haven't heard him, heard him his commentary. He's not that bad. He's not that bad. I've been watching main event, and he's in, he was on SmackDown for a week or so as well during um, Jerry Lawler's incident. So he's not that bad. You know, he's okay. So I will give him a chance, and I think it's going to be a good change. I think, like I said, JBL Mara will work well. Colin Graves will work well. Do we need a third? And that's another question. Do we need a third commentator for each show? I don't think we really do. Think about it. What does Byron Saxon ever really offer to Raw and SmackDown? He's been on both shows. What does he ever really offer? Not much at all. He's the third, like he's the the babyface kind of guy, the third wheel. David Otunga is going to be the third guy as well. What do they really offer? Like, you know, nothing, not much really. This kind of repeat and kind of offer a little bit of analysis as a babyface perspective. Maybe Michael Cole's and Mauro is kind of neutral, but. Realistically, they don't really offer much. So, if you ask me, Michael Cole and Corey Graves by themselves would work well, and Morinello and JBL by themselves would work pretty good. So, let's get rid of David. Let's give it a By- get rid of Byron. We don't really need them. Keep David on um, main event, and maybe put Byron Saxon on, on superstars if we have to. If he needs a job, let's put him there. But he doesn't really need to be on Raw, and David doesn't really need to be on SmackDown. But that's the draft. We've done 40 minutes here, and we've talked about the draft. Overall, I liked it. Um, I thought the draft, the the matches on the show were unnecessary at times. More picks could have been done on the show to make it better, but um, a good rating for SmackDown. I think both rosters will be competitive. I think, like I said, I think definitely SmackDown is going to be the better show. I think Raw is going to struggle in the long run. I think they're going to really struggle unless they go ahead and get some NXT guys in there or they sign some people from left field or they sign a lot of these cruiserweight guys. If this cruiserweight division doesn't really work out, I don't really see how they're going to kind of fill the three hours. I don't know. I don't see it. And um, that's a bit of a worry. SmackDown, I mean, you know, look, it's it's SmackDown. Are they going to actually treat it with respect? Are they going to actually give it a chance? Who knows? Let's hope they do. And if they do, then there's a potential that... SmackDown could become great again. And that's, you know, this is actually a time when we need to use that word. SmackDown was great. It used to be great. Darren Young never was great. Never was. Um, Alright, so... Oh, yeah, just before I forget, I, I was thinking about what... <laughs> I had it in my head and it kind of went away from me. But the titles. What are they going to do with the titles? Is the women's going to be floating around? Are the tag titles going to be floating around? They've got to sort that out, and they've got to really inform us what they're going to do, because they haven't really given us much, have they? They haven't really said too much, and I don't think they know what they're going to do. That's the problem. They don't know what title's going to be on what. They don't know what they're going to do with the world title. They're going to bring back a second one. They don't know. We don't know, and it's confusing us, and we need to find out and sooner rather than later. So hopefully within the next week, they actually inform us what their plans are, tell us what they're going to do, Otherwise, we're just going to be in over our heads and, and it's going to be even more confusing than usual. So they've got to sort that out and they've got to sort that out uh, ASAP. All right, so we'll move on to Battleground and we'll get into your questions as well. So for Battleground, we have Chris Jericho will host the highlight reel with SmackDown's... Ready. Okay, so they're doing the whole SmackDown and Raw kind of thing. So Raw's Chris Jericho will host the highlight reel with SmackDown's Randy Orton. Um... That'd be good. See Randy back. Hopefully he gets a big reaction. That'd be cool. We haven't seen him in a while. I mean, I do miss Randy Orton. Randy Orton's been a favorite of mine for a long time. I'm, I've missed him, and I'm going to be glad to see him back. Becky Lynch versus Natalia. Um, you know, whatever. Piss break. The Miz. Oh, we'll give it a prediction. I think Becky Lynch will win. The Miz versus Darren Young. The Miz hopefully will win. Rusev versus Zack Ryder. Rusev will hopefully win, but I wouldn't be surprised, surprised if they did the double switch. There's no way they're going to have two titles on one brand. So if The Miz loses, well, Rusev's going to lose as well. So if The Miz wins, then you can bet your bottom dollar that Rusev's winning as well because they're not going to put two on one. They're going to switch switch it over or leave as is. Charlotte and Dana Brooke versus Sasha, Sasha Banks and a partner of her choosing. I think my prediction is Bailey. Um, is that too obvious? Will it be 
Carmelo? Is it going to be someone with, you know, we know about? I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. You know, is, what is going to happen, Bailey? She's clearly done everything there is to do in NXT. She's clearly ready to move up. If she doesn't move, if she doesn't become the partner of Sasha Banks at Battleground, is she ever going to move up? I mean, honestly, <laughs> I guess it's a little bit of the same with Finn Balor. It was like, is Finn Balor, or actually with Sami Zayn, more so than Finn Balor, but Sami Zayn was like, is he this guy ever going to go up? I mean, come on. How long is he going to be in NXT for? It's getting that way with Bailey. Like, how long is she going to be in there for? She's been the champ. She was champ for a while. She had a good run. Let's move her up. What are you waiting for? Um, Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens. Um, I could see Sami Zayn winning and finally getting his revenge and kind of ending the rivalry. The baby face finally gets the win overall. I could see that happening. The New Day versus the White Family. Um, so this will be like one of the final time, maybe the final time the White Family team up again. So I would have to assume that the New Day will win because it probably would make no sense for the White Family to win if they're not going to team up anymore. So I think the New Day will win. Um, Cena will team up with Enzo and Big Cass to versus the club. Styles. Uh, sorry, yeah, it's versus the club. Um, I think I could see the club winning, I think, honestly. Um, give AJ Styles another win and perhaps kind of leave Styles and Cena on their own to fight each other after at SummerSlam. Maybe Cena will win as well and the Enzo and Cass and kind of AJ Styles look for some revenge. I don't know. It could go either way, honestly. I could see it going either way. I think the club needs the win more than Enzo and Cass because the club haven't had the wins. Enzo and Cass have won, have only lost like one match in the last five weeks or so. So the Enzo and Cass probably doing okay. The club probably need the win a little bit more. So I'd have the club win that one. Ambrose versus Rollins versus Reigns for the WWE Championship. Look, I mean... You have Raw, Rollins is on Raw, Reigns is on Raw, Ambrose on SmackDown. Does that really factor in? I don't know. Will they give the title back to Reigns? It's possible. I think the smart move would just be to keep it on Ambrose, honestly. Give Ambrose a run. Give him a chance to be champion. Why not? And keep the belt on SmackDown. SmackDown really needs the belt. I mean, SmackDown don't have the extra time. Don't have the star power. Well, they'd have some star power, but Raw obviously has much more people on the show. SmackDown having the belt will give people to kind of tune in, give them more of a reason to tune in. I think Ambrose will be on both shows anyways. I think the champion, for the time being, will be on both shows anyways because how can they build Raw? You Think about it. How can, they, how can they have three hours of Raw and not even have the champion on the show? You know, no, no mention of the champion on the show because there's no title to fight for. So it would kind of be idiotic. So I think Ambrose has to be on both shows. But at the end of the day, I think Ambrose should keep the title, help be the top guy on SmackDown and kind of help establish SmackDown as something, you know, something worth watching again. So, alrighty. So that is the, the Battleground predictions. That's the draft talk. Been an interesting week in wrestling this week. It's been a good week. Um... Did it live up to the hype? Probably not. I mean, I was very excited for it. You know, very, very happy to see the draft. And I think it's something the WWE needs to do. I think the brand split is a good decision. I don't think they're regretting it. We'll see how it goes. You know, will it last? How long will they go with it? I mean, if the ratings don't improve, I could see them scrapping it pretty quickly because it's a big risk. They're splitting up their roster again. You know, and at a time, the star power of the show is dwindling. And they really do need to um, get some guys over and uh, fast. But hey, look, if things start to work out, then we might actually start to see W become really interesting again because we have so many opportunities for guys to shine now and actually get a genuine push. SmackDown's actually going to be something worth watching again. So realistically, the W should really benefit from this. Raw will probably keep getting the same ratings, probably keep getting $3 million, But the chance of SmackDown to go from $2 million up to $3 million themselves... AKA okay, giving Raw, you know, giving WWE an extra one million in ratings every week is pretty, pretty high. So I think there's a good chance that SmackDown, you know, will do that, and there's a good chance that WWE will certainly benefit from it. I would love to see, you know, ratings, ratings come into play. 
I'd love to see trades between the GMs. I would love to see, you know, contracts and, you know, money talking like, you know, GMs trying to fight over people, trying to offer them the most money. Things like that would be cool. You know, kind of really go into the details of the brand split. I, I don't know. For me, I would like to see that. You know, maybe even like a salary cap or something. And, you know, they can't afford to give, you know, um, Shinsuke Nakamura more than 450000 on their show. Something, you know, something like that. Maybe kind of add a bit more realism to it. I don't know. But I'm excited for it. Hopefully, Battleground is a good show. It'll be the end of the end of an era, really, won't it? It pretty much is. An end of an era. End of the, the raw, dominating era. And hopefully SmackDown can recover. Hopefully SmackDown is good. Hopefully Raw is good. But really, Raw should be two hours. SmackDown should be two hours. SmackDown should look completely different to Raw. Raw should look completely different to SmackDown. And things have got to change. They've got a lot of things that need to change for this thing to really work out properly. Hopefully they're committed enough. And hopefully they're actually not lazy and hopefully they actually, you know, try and implement a few changes. Because if they do, then the brand split might actually work. Alrighty, so let's get into our questions for this week's show. First one's coming from Best in Class. He says, simple, Lucha Underground or Ring of Honor? It's got to be Lucha Underground. You know, compelling TV, exciting storylines, doing things that I've never seen done before. Um, unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to watch this season. I should. I really hope they kind of bring it to Netflix or something where I can just get a hold of it and binge watch it. I would love to do that. Um, I enjoy it. Every, every time I watch it, I really enjoy it, but I just don't watch it enough. Lucha Under, Underground is great. Ring of Honor, I haven't really watched much of, honestly. It's just a straight-up pure wrestling show. I know they do some storylines here and there, but honestly, um, Lucha Underground is the way to go. Lucha Underground's got more stars as well, in my opinion. And I think Lucha Underground's just got just as good, if not better, wrestling. So I think Lucha Underground, don't be surprised if they can keep this show running in three, four years' time. They might, you know, make a small splash or something in the wrestling scene. But um, the signs are there. They're doing pretty good. All right, so the next question is coming from Best in Class again. If you had to give one up, would it be wrestling for a year or PS4 for six months? It would have to be wrestling. Um, PS4, look, you can have any game you want. You can play so many different things. Wrestling, you know, you get it once a week, twice a week for a few hours. PS4, you can have it for as long as you want, as much as you want. I could give up wrestling for a year. I don't think I could give PS4 up for six months, quite honestly. If I give up PS4, I can't make videos. Simple as that. But um, I definitely think I could give out wrestling. PS4, yeah, probably not. Best in class again. With the Cruiserweight division returning, who would you like to see back and who would you like to see hold the title first? Um, I would like to see Tajiri, Brian Kendrick. A lot of the guys in the Cruiserweight Classic be signed. I think the rumor is that Grand Metallic and Kota Ibushi have signed, which I think is a great thing. Grand Metallic, um, I haven't watched the second episode of Cruiserweight Classic, but Grand Metallic was really, really good. He was phenomenal. I think he impressed me the most out of the first one. Kota Ibushi, um, he's real good as well. He, he's, you know, got star power written all over. So he has a big future as well. So look, there's a few guys there. Um, maybe when I watch a bit more, there's some other, there'll be uh, some other Cruiserweights that I see from that and they can kind of get. But... Um, yeah, you know, just scour TNA, Ring of Honor, Lucha Underground, see who's available and get the best names that are available. As simple as that. Um, I'd like to see Zack Sabre Jr. get signed. Uh, I think Will Ospreay has um, some Japan commitments, but I'd, I'd like to see him in the W one day. I'd like to see a Carter in the W one day. Um, so, yeah, there's a few, different, few names there that um, could be very exciting in the future. Uh, this one's from Nate Dog. What do you think of SmackDown beating Raw in the ratings in its live debut show? I wouldn't look too much into it. It's the draft. It's the big thing. SmackDown was obviously the the big show this week. Um, no pun intended, but it was the biggest show of the week. So most people kind of wanted to see the draft. They're not really tuning in to see SmackDown. They're really tuning in to see the draft. SmackDown, on the other hand, beats Raw next week. Then... Then, then it's on. Then it's on. Then it's going to get interesting. But I don't think they will. I don't think they're going to lose the whole million. I could see SmackDown getting 2.5 million next week. Probably losing 500,000 viewers. But also, 
retaining a few more viewers than normal. Um, it'll be interesting to see. Hopefully, SmackDown can be competitive. It would it'd be great to see both shows battled out each week in the ratings. That would be really interesting. And it might even kind of encourage them to kind of make some changes to Raw to kind of compete. That would be cool. Hopefully, SmackDown becomes the number one show. Because then, look, they're going to have to change Raw. That's what we want. This one is from Roy the Boy. What's your favorite traditional Survivor Series match of all time? That's an easy one. Survivor Series 2001. Team WWE versus The Alliance. The names in that match. The star power. The the storyline. Everything about it was just brilliant. Just perfect. I mean, look, you had Team WWF, I think, was... Who was it? It was The Rock. Jericho. Um... Kane, Undertaker, was it Kurt Angle as well, or was, I can't quite remember, but I know something happened there, but, um, actually, no, yeah, I can't remember, but, um, yeah, and then the, the Alliance had Stone Cold, and RVD, and, and Booker T, I think, and, yeah, that was pretty good, it was, it was a great, and, oh, Shane McMahon, he's the, the MVP of the match, he made me laugh my ass off when I saw that, I've seen that match probably three or four, five times, Really good match. If you've never seen it, I probably got some of the people in the match wrong. But go and check it out. It's my favorite Survivor Series match. It's on YouTube, on the network. It's really worth watching. Any time where there's a SmackDown vs. Raw or some kind of major implication around a Survivor Series match, then things get really interesting. Um, the one they did in 2014 or 13 when Sting debuted, that might be in, in my top three, top five. That was actually a really, really good match as well. Um, I could I can't really tell you number two or anything like that number three because I just don't remember. But the one that always sticks out in my mind is the 2001 Survivor Series match. The other ones are pretty good during that SmackDown vs Raw period. If maybe you know 2005 might be when Randy Orton was the, the lone survivor. That was a good one I think as well. So take a look at those couple. I would like to see a SmackDown vs Raw Survivor Series uh, match this year. That would be awesome. And maybe maybe next week we can kind of think about who should be on those show, who should be on the uh, on those teams, because now we know who's on each show. Maybe next week we can kind of look into who should be um, on those teams. Samia, so do you think the SmackDown? Do you think SmackDown only having two picks and Raw having three picks was bullshit? Yeah, but Raw's three hours; they need more people, so it makes sense. But you're immediately having a difference between the two shows. Raw has more of an advantage. Raw already feels like the major show. SmackDown feels like the B show. So, I can honestly, I can see SmackDown, the people who are on SmackDown really kind of rebelling and really trying to like, going, fuck these guys. Can I get the feeling that they might be like, you know what, we're putting on the B show. Let's, let's try and outdo Raw. Let's show Raw what we can do and let's make SmackDown good. I can really see SmackDown, the people on the roster, really giving a lot more effort to make SmackDown much better than Raw. Because I don't think they see it as an emotion or anything like that, but I think they see it more of as a challenge, more of an opportunity. And I hope they can deliver, because I think if they can, if they can, you know, it's going to change things a lot. Whereas people on Raw, you know, I would rather be on SmackDown, because I think on Raw, you're probably going to have... You're probably going to get an opportunity. You're probably going to be on the show every week, let's be honest. But... I think more often than not, you know, you have more opportunity, I think, on SmackDown to kind of really deliver. I I, I don't know. I, I get it. I guess that on Raw, you, you got more of a chance. But, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Seth Rollins has five segments a week now. Or Roman Reigns has got three promos a show. You know, something stupid like that. Stephanie McMahon's in every single, every second segment. Things like that just to clog up time. Wouldn't be surprised. So I don't think it's necessarily going to mean, you know, Darren Young is going to get a big damn push or Cesaro is going to become the next, you know, main event guy because he has to because they need, you know, need someone to fill the void. I think, if anything, they're just going to clog it up with the same old shit. You know, they're going to clog it up with more time for people instead of giving more time to everyone. They're going to give more time to the people that matter. So it's not really going to benefit that much being on Raw. Um, Flynn, with the brand split, do you think they should go back to once again having two Money in the Bank ladder matches or a single ladder match with the holder getting to choose whichever champ he wants to cash in on? Um, I'd keep one. I like one. Um, I think two Money in the Bank briefcases. Just, 
you know, look, I like having the op- option to do what you want. Go to whichever one you want. I know my universe mode, I changed it to two, but I think I've kind of established the brand split enough and good enough where it needs to be two. Whereas in WWE, having that excitement of he can go to either show, I think it, it, it's something they need. They need that excitement. Whereas, you know, my universe mode, we know he's going to cash in. We know who he's cashing in on. So when's he going to do it? So you can even switch it up year by year. Some years you have two, some years you have one. Just change it up depending on, you know, how you feel, what your plans are for the year, what your plans are. And and uh, if you need two money the bank briefcases then do it if you only need one then just do one uh this one comes from bad news bullet bad attitude bullet i should say um with the brand split coming do you think the w should allow the raw winner to challenge for both titles if yes do you think it will bring back the unpredictability uh nature that we all know and love Yes, if the Raw Rumble winner, if there is two titles, the Raw Rumble winner should be able to choose which title he wants to go for. Like you said, it's going to be unpredictable. It's going to add another element of excitement, and I think it's going to be very beneficial for them. Um, having the option just to choose one, you know, if he's on SmackDown, he can only go for the SmackDown title. Eh, that sucks. That sucks. His other idea was, do you think they should get rid of the Raw Rumble, have two battle royals instead to see who faces the Raw Champion and who faces the SmackDown Champion? No. You've got to have the Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble is the biggest, you know, one of the biggest, you know, pay views of the year. One of the most exciting matches of the year. You've got to have the Rumble. Just have one, and the winner can face whoever. Larry Williams, do you think the draft is a chance for the WWE to change Roman Reigns' gimmick? Well, Larry, I think it is a chance, but do I think they're going to do it? I don't think so. I think Roman Reigns will come back, same music, same look, same everything. But could he come back, change his music, change his look? change a few things about him, kind of reinvent himself, would it be a good time to do it? Hell yeah, it would be. He's been gone for a month. It'd be a perfect time to change a few things about him, but will they do it? Nah, I, I can't see it. Thomas Speller, are there any series on your channel that you regret doing or wish you could do again? Um, I kind of regret not doing some more games. Like, I regret not playing, you know, like a Battlefield series or some kind of first-person shooter series because I, I love doing playing shooter games and i kind of want to do that with battlefield one as you guys have heard from me i want to do that with battlefield one and do some battlefield one videos this year in terms of a series that i have done or i was doing and i regret not doing i regret not finishing an nba series a couple times and maybe even the road to gold series i thought that was a cool little series i was doing i like doing that um, Smack Raw 2011, kind of using the, when they, the ranking system on that game was actually good, kind of doing a little bit of a career mode on that kind of game, which was, which was fun. I liked doing that. Um, the reason why I stopped doing that is because, you know, just the views and the interest was really dwindling at the time where, uh, my universe mode was going, dying, was, was doing good, I should say, and, uh, I needed to focus on that more. Um, didn't have the chance to kind of do things full time at that point, so I had to kind of focus on, um, the more important things, and Road to Goal just wasn't that at the time. So maybe I regret doing that. I don't like to live too much with regret. I kind of, well, I, I like to say that, but I probably do, you know, live with things, a few things with regret. But uh, there's a few things that I, I guess I regret. Um, maybe again this year, not kind of doing enough NBA. Like NBA has always been one. I, I enjoy doing it. I just don't, you know, do enough of it. But um, yeah. Um, and it'll be the final question for today's episode. Uh, what's your favorite Pokemon and what's your favorite, favorite Pokemon game and generation? Alrighty. So I have been playing a lot of Pokemon go. I have been playing and playing and playing. I'm only at level 10, so I haven't been playing that much, but every time I go out, I'm always looking to try and catch a few Pokemon. I think I've caught about 50 at the moment, 50 different types. I'm doing okay. Problem with Pokemon Go is, is that every time I go out, the servers are always down. I've been out. We went out the other night, and we went out for about two hours, and the whole two hours, the, the fucking game was down. So the only time I go out to play this damn game, the servers are down. And I've had so many issues. Every time I try and play it, it's had so many problems. And it seems as though the only times that it works is when I don't want to play it, is when I'm not playing it. So every time I've been actively going, you know what? I'm going to go out and play Pokemon Go. I want to play it's not working so i do enjoy it but is it my favorite pokemon game hell no uh favorite pokemon game and actually have been playing pokemon on um recently been playing pokemon heart gold 
I uh, decided I'm going to do a playthrough of that. And I wouldn't even mind streaming that. I think that would be fun to do. I did some Pokemon streaming uh, what, last year. I wouldn't mind doing that again. I, I like Pokemon. I really do. I'm starting to get back. And it's a bit trendy at the moment, isn't it? So I'm starting to get back into it. Um, so Pokemon, my favorite Pokemon game, is probably the first one I played. I played Pokemon Blue. Pokemon Blue was my first, you know, was my first Pokemon game. Let's probably say Pokemon Yellow. I mean, Pokemon Yellow, Pokemon Blue. Probably Pokemon Yellow is the better game. So we'll say Pokemon Yellow. So the first generation is my favorite. My fir- and my favorite game was probably Pokemon Yellow. My favorite Pokemon. Um, that is a, it's a tough one. I mean, I don't, I don't really know. I don't. Honestly, I don't really know. I, I like a number of Pokemon. I like a Charizard. Um, I like some of the legendary birds, like um, Zapdos and Anakuno. Um, I like Dragon Knight. Um, there's a number that I really like. I, I really do. Hard to pinpoint a favorite. I don't know if I have a favorite. Um, I really liked Pokemon Gold and Crystal. I didn't play Silver. I didn't... So that gen, the second generation, I really like second generation as well. And I was reading the other day, it was like, you know what, Pokemon, the first and second generations was the right na- amount of Pokemon. That was like the the sweet spot. And I get that they needed to add more to kind of add have new games and have things to do. I get that, but I think the sweet spot was probably after the two games. What was it two hundred fifty six or something like that? That was like the sweet spot. And the legendary on that, uh, Ho-Oh, or I think it is, um, he was probably my favorite on there as well. I really, really liked him, and I always really liked trying to get him. So he might be one of my favorites as well. So I love Pokemon. I really do, and it's cool that it's popular again. Uh, what is, what, what's old is new, which is cool. I wish Pokemon Go was better. I wish Pokemon Go you could battle and trade with people. Hopefully they release that. You know, I like Pokemon Go, but the problem is, is that, you know, my best Pokemon's what, level 550, so I can't battle any gyms, and I want to be able to battle. My favorite thing about Pokemon is battling, so I want to be able to battle people, and I want to be able to battle my girlfriend. She's the same level as me, we've got some similar level Pokemon, it'd be fun, it'd be interesting, battle her, try and beat her, but we can't do that yet, so if they add some of those things in there, it'd be fun. In terms of the original games, love Pokemon. Haven't played the new ones, Sun and Moon coming out. I don't know if I'll ever play that. Um, I played Pokemon Black probably a few months ago. That was okay. Uh, Haven't played Black 2 or White or anything like that. I stopped playing Pokemon at Pearl uh, on the DS, and I that was the first time that I actually probably got as got as many Pokemon as I did. Like, probably the first time I've completed any of the Pokedexes. I didn't get all of them, obviously, but I completed the, you know, their, you know, that that generation's Pokedex, and then I got quite a lot afterwards as well. So that was probably the only time I've got this, as gotten as many as I ever have and actually tried to catch all of them. So that was a lot of fun. And I guess after I did that, kind of burnt out. I kind of, actually, you know, I probably stopped playing handheld games from then on. Stopped playing the DS entirely. So it wasn't that I didn't like Pokemon. I think I was just moved on. Just kind of started playing consoles a lot more. You know, I played a lot of Game Boy when I was, when I was a kid. Game Boy was my thing. Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. I played a hell of a lot of it. Like, I was always on Pokemon. But I guess, what was it, 2007 or something like that? I think I just started getting into more of consoles. Like, I had the consoles the whole time, but I was getting, starting to become more of a serious gamer with that. Um, certainly 2009, 2010, when I got addicted to Call of Duty and, you know, I was always playing PS3 online. When I got that kind of element to it, I kind of never went back to the handhelds, never went back to Pokemon, anything like that. So it's been fun to be able to play, um, Pokemon Go and kind of relive that again and kind of have that experience. So that's been fun. So yeah, so favorite Pokemon game, probably Pokemon Yellow. Or even like Fire Red, you know, obviously kind of the the remake of it. Heart Gold's pretty good too, though. So there's a few. Alrighty, guys, that will do it for this week's edition of the Let's Talk Thursdays, I guess, podcast. Uh, I don't know if Thursday does it roll off the tongue like it does. Ch- let's talk Tuesdays. Let's talk Thursdays. It's gonna get there. It's gonna take some time, but we're gonna get we're gonna make sure that rolls off the tongue. 
just as good as Tuesday. Guys, thank you so much again for listening in this week. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the draft. Let me know all your thin- thoughts and opinions on the draft. I want to know everything you thought about the draft. Are you happy with the rosters? Are you happy with who went where? Do you think the draft is fair? Do you think the brand split can work? Give me your thoughts and opinions on everything we discuss in today's uh, episode. Next week, like I said, will probably be a bit of a pre-recorded edition because I'll be gone on Thursday. Um, so we'll see how we go there. So keep an eye out for that. Make sure you do leave a question for next week's episode, though, and I will try and answer all of your questions next week. Leave a voicemail for next week as well. And um, check out the website. We put up a new article on the website just before the show went up. And uh, we've got uh, Hell in a Cell coming up this Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, July 23rd is the day. Lots of fun there. I'm currently working on Hell in a Cell right now. I need to kind of get it done. I'm a little bit behind. I've been a little bit slack. So I need to kind of work on that and kind of get that going. But hopefully you guys do enjoy that pay-per-view. I think it's going to be a good one. I think there's a few things that I think you'll like about it for sure. And I think I'm going to try and make it as interesting as I possibly can. There will be a pre-show for it as well. That'll be up That'll be up before the pay-per-view is uploaded as well. And that'll be streamed half an hour or so. Half an hour, 45 minutes before the pay-per-view uh, is done. The pay-per-view is up. So keep an eye out for that. Hope you, hopefully you can make it to the stream. It'll be streamed on Twitch and YouTube. So keep an eye out for that. Guys, thank you so much for listening in. Follow me on Twitter at Brendan Plays. Leave a like on the Facebook page, Brendan Plays Official. You can also leave a question for next week's show there as well. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you all next, well, Thursday.